folks, Debbie Ray here, the gardener wife. Today I'm going to walk you through a watering routine. And I'm going to start here on my deck with this large container. Large containers like this need a lot of water. And the way you can tell that you have watered the container enough is that you will see water pouring out and filling up the saucer below it eventually. My, uh, what I'm using right now is a, a very low tech equipment. I have a hose, a garden hose, and a watering wand attached to it. This is great for when you're reaching up into hanging baskets like I have back there. And uh, it's also great in the garden when you want to get below the foliage of the plants. So here we go. Now you can see that it's gotten enough water because the saucer is filled even to overflowing here. Now these saucers need to be emptied every, uh, every other day or two in order to avoid mosquitoes um, developing. Same thing for bird baths. When I'm watering, I'll fill the bird baths. And then when I empty this bird bath, if I haven't uh, yet needed to water everything else, I will just use that water and pour it on whichever plant nearby uh, needs it most. And that's how I water with the watering wand for my containers. These are the containers on my deck that need to be watered most often. Even though the window boxes are a, a self-watering style, they're small and they are under the soffit, so they do not get rain and uh, they dry out quicker than the large containers. The self-watering containers, like the other containers, need to be filled until they're overflowing. When the water pours out of the reservoir, I know it is full. And these smaller ones that didn't come with a saucer or a reservoir, make sure that you put holes in the bottom of the pot and add a saucer to act as its reservoir. And then back here you can see some of my grow bags. The biggest one is over here, a nice smart, smart pot. These two need to make sure that they are watered thoroughly all the way down to the roots. The better you are at watering these, the less likely you will have blossom end rot, which I do have on a couple of my plants. See, that comes from uneven watering, but I've gotten better as the season has gone on, so the newer tomatoes forming are looking great. Now I like to go down the line at least twice so that I can see if there are any containers that are not completely filled. See, this one is, is full and here's one that's not. So I know that we need to add more water there. And I just keep doing that all the way down. I use the self-watering containers mainly for the tomatoes and these smaller ones for ground cherries. My other plants, like the peppers over here and eggplant, are not in self-watering containers. I don't have enough of them to go around, and these plants do fine as long as I keep watering them every one to three days, depending on the heat. The thing to remember about container gardening is that rainfall does not help the containers a whole lot. Not many of the raindrops actually make it into these guys and their roots don't reach out into the surrounding ground like in the raised beds or in ground gardens. And that's why you have to water containers more often than you have to water an in-ground garden, even if it rains. I normally don't water my perennial beds such as this cottage garden unless we have a serious drought going on and I might lose some of the plants. If I have new plants that are recently planted, such as these in this area, then I definitely have to keep watering them until they're established. Next I'm going to start watering the kitchen garden. So I've stretched the garden hose all the way across the yard and long enough to reach down to the last bed. And I hooked it up here over my uh, raspberry trellis. I 
use the watering one to water the few containers that are here and the one bed that doesn't have a soaker hose. This is my herbs and edibles flowers bed. It's the only one of the, bed, of the beds in my kitchen garden here that does not have a soaker hose in it, so I use the watering wand here again. The rest of the beds here have soaker hoses in them, so I will detach the watering wand and hook it up to each of these soaker hoses one by one. So here under Mrs. Greenbeans you can see it's easier to see the soaker hose down there. This is the kind of soaker hose I use. It doesn't uh, curl up too much like the old ones I had. And it's 50 feet long, so it will go up and down each of my beds five times. And that helps it to reach every plant in there pretty well. So this is a pretty low-tech system. I replant the annuals in the six vegetable beds every year, so I don't have a permanently installed drip irrigation system with automatic timers. I do it by hand like this, one bed at a time. I hook the hose up to the end of the soaker hose in each bed. Once the hose is hooked up to the soaker hose, just a little quarter inch turn is enough for the soaker hose to do its work and water the whole bed. But it takes time. When I see that the soaker hose has started all the way through to the other end of the bed, then I set a timer on my phone for 15 or 20 minutes, depending on how much water I want it to get. When that timer goes off, I will unhook the hose from this soaker hose and move it on to the next garden bed. And then every 20 minutes on to the next bed and the bed after that. So it'll take two to three hours to water the whole kitchen garden with the soaker hose this way. But in the meantime, I am free to go and work on other things. So right now, I'm going to go and water more containers with my rain barrel water. I have four rain barrels and only a quarter inch of rainfall will fill one of them completely. So an inch of rain will fill all four of them. And I love using these rain barrels to conserve water. I use them mostly for watering my containers. And if I only have a few containers to water, then a watering can is fine. I'll just fill that up and go and water those few containers. But you've seen, I have a lot of containers. So I have found a much easier way to use the rain barrel water for watering them. And that is to use one of these large rolling carts. And I fill this a little less than halfway full with water. When this is full up to here, it's about five gallons of water. Normally, I could hardly lift five gallons of water, let alone tote it all around the yard. But here, when it's on wheels, I can, I can uh, roll it all the way and water all of my containers with the fewest number of trips back and forth to the rain barrels. This is a cool trip. Once I bring the water close to the container, I use a pot, what my mom would have called the lopatka, to scoop the water. And I keep scooping and moving this cart from container to container until it's empty and then go back and forth. Still, much fewer trips than carrying around a one or two gallon watering can and it's not as much of a strain on my arms. So that's pretty much my watering routine. Thanks for watching.